Hello, hello everybody, this is Kira Show here. Now, yes, this is me, even with the voice changer on. Which, apparently, someone didn't really think about until probably halfway through the video. Now, I'm going to turn it off. Yeah, I'm having way too much fun with that thing. Anyways, now then, let's pick up exactly where we left off. Deku, he is in this orphanage. And he is actually laying awake at night. Finding this to be a bit difficult. As he's just staring at his phone while he's in bed. He does actually share a room with a couple other children. And they all know that Deku has a phone. But they don't really care. They've had better things, they've had worse things. Meh, doesn't really matter. But, Deku, he's just staring at a blank screen. That's correct, so everyone just thinks the phone might be dead. No use in taking a, well, broken phone. Now, Deku, he would just try and talk to his phone. As he holds it up and starts using his quirk. To which, he begins to look into it a bit more. He opens up the phone, and actually does watch as the code appears on the screen. Deku is holding it directly above his head as he's looking at it. Just watching as the code is moving on screen, seeing exactly what is being written down. As he just says, how do I know it's going to be you tomorrow? How do I know it's not going to be another man coming after me? Well, kid, it's quite simple, actually. Now, as soon as that happens, Deku, he would somewhat, well, scream a bit. He would let out a little yelp as he drops the phone. It's smacking down onto his face. As Deku would just jump up with it, saying... You've been watching me this whole time? Yes, kid, I have been. Now, I'm a bit of a late owl, or a night owl, as you can say. I'm making sure they're not coming after you again. I've been scrubbing most of your record clean, and the incident will eventually disappear. But, do understand, get some sleep. And stop using your quirk. You're going to draw unneeded attention to yourself right now. But, but how am I going to know it's you then, if you're going to be coming by? What? How? Can you at least explain that to me? I'm still trying to think about it. I don't know who you are, I don't know what you look like, I don't know any detail about you. I just know that that... You're... Well, the voice on the phone. That's it. That's all I know. Can you at least give me something? <sighs> okay. But after I tell you, you must get some sleep. Now, what I'm going to be wearing is a coat. I will also have hat, a hat, glasses, and part of my face covered. Along with... I'm bringing by a specialized order. This order was signed by your father. In the event of his death, he told me to use it. In the event of your mother's death, he told me to take it to a church, or wherever you end up at. Giving it to a judge. I've somewhat gone through that already. And it's going to just get quite, quite more confusing. Uh, okay, but... Can... Hmm, can you at least tell me one thing? Please? Fine. But afterwards, 
you must get some sleep. We will have a busy day ahead of us tomorrow. Do you understand? Y yes. Okay. But exactly how well did you know my dad? So far as I've ever known, he's never really had any friends. He just seemed to work a lot. So, how exactly did you know him? Hmm. The man was my hero. Anytime I needed help on a project, or was falling a bit behind, or anything bad happened, he seemed to always be there. He is, was, one of my greatest friends. Even if he didn't feel the same way. He at least trusted me to take care of you. So, Midoriya, that at least proves that even though he was not there for you, your father still loved you. Now, Deku hearing that would be, well, sad. His eyes would begin to tear up. He just lost his mom and his dad, but his dad still loved him. He knows that. As the screen would turn black, Deku, his eyes immediately somewhat lighting at this. As they're adjusting to the moonlight, him just staring at this blank screen. The, sc the man would then just tell Deku that he needs to go to sleep. That was the last question. As Deku would lay on his side, sliding the phone into his pillowcase and then falling asleep as he would wake up tomorrow. As he wakes up, he would immediately go to look inside the pillowcase. As he's moving a hand, his hand around, he would find the phone and grab it, pulling it out, then walking outside. He knows that even though other kids have things, they aren't above taking others, just because they have them. So he needs to be careful with this, as he would slip it into his pocket, and head to mess around some of the other kids. Deku thinks that things will be fine, but this is different, or at least difficult. Since some of the other kids, they are showing off their quirks, and other kids are a bit sad. Their quirks, they might not be as well. Fancy or weird, but they're at least normal. Some of the kids are actually getting mad. Now, Deku would then hear one of the nuns say something, as he would turn, then basically waving their hand inside, telling Deku to come here. As Deku would walk over. As soon as that happens, Deku, he would be walking inside. As the no one to say that they have a paper signed. It says that you're supposed to leave with someone today. Are you aware of that? To which Deku just nod his head, saying that yes, yes he is. Now, as Deku is walking out with the woman, he would see a group of men. One of them is in a suit. The other is clearly in, well, the others are in suits around him as Deku's phone was somewhat vibrating in his hand. Deku then looking down at the screen to see the symbol appear on the wall appear. Kid, that's not me. Listen, stay calm. Just head to the bathroom right now, okay? Now, Deku, he would listen, immediately telling the sister that he needs to go use the bathroom as he would somewhat run over there, immediately going in and locking the door. The sister taking notice to this. Every time it seems that there's someone here for Deku, he usually does this. Even then, this is... different. He seems to be a bit more scared and frightened. So, this might be... Hmm as she would walk over to the bathroom, 
asking Deku if everything's fine. To which he would just say that it's it's okay. I just had too much to drink this morning. To which she would just tell Deku that that's okay, but if you don't want to come out and well see the men, they'll at least try and figure things out for you, okay? If you don't want to leave, then we can't force you. But they'll at least have to get that run by a judge again. Do you do you know what that means? To which Deku would just say no. The sister's stating that it means that you'll have to stay here for longer. So if you're okay with that, then, well, it'll be perfectly fine with everyone here. I do hope you understand. As she would walk away. Going over to the other nun and seeing exactly what's going on. Looking down at this paper. It is a forgery. Clearly a good one, however since she doesn't even notice the difference. But she does at least notice small, tiny details that would normally be on one of these. She's worked at this church for years, and has seen many of these documents. A lot of them do change, but some small details remain the same. If you get rid of those, then it's not an official document. It may have just been changed, however, so she would actually pull up her phone and begin to make a call. As soon as he does show, well, does so, this is whenever the man would pull out a gun and point it directly at her face as he would pull the trigger, killing her. Now, as soon as that happens, over in the bathroom, Deku, he heard the gunshot. So did the man on the phone. Listen to me, Midoriya. This is going to get very, very messy. Now, I need you to do one thing for me. Turn off the lights and take cover in the bathtub. Is there a bathtub in there? Midoriya, he would just say yes, yes there is. As he would follow the man's instructions. Turning off the switches and pulling the curtain closed in the bathtub. As there was gunfire going off. And he can hear quite a lot of screaming. Deku, he would then begin to hear a loud high-pitched sound, as he covers his ears. As he can hear lights blowing in the other room, along with what sounds like the stove and possibly even the refrigerator exploding, which kind of throws him off for a minute. This loud high-pitched sound, he's heard it a lot. Anytime, well, something begins to happen like this, he hears the sound. So clearly, it's connected somehow. Now, Deku, he would hear something as a man is bashing on the door. Now, the man would then walk in. Deku hearing him switch on the lights. As soon as he switches on the lights, this is whenever they would turn on. They would then get very, very bright as this loud sound can be heard in Deku's ears. Deku hearing these lights explode in the man's face. As... Glass shards be sent everywhere, getting him. He would then start firing randomly, as he fires three shots into the mirror, and then begins to just swing the gun around. As soon as that happens, he begins to just fire directly into the bathtub, firing through the curtain, as Deku is just laying down. He would still begin to cry, as Deku would look through one of these wool. A small gap in the curtain. Seeing this man, he's bleeding from his face. As he would see someone walk up straight behind him and grab him by the neck. He would then proceed to put enough pressure down to actually choke him out. As he would fall to the ground. Him immediately just lowering the man down and taking his gun. Taking out the magazine and taking the round out of the chamber. He would then look up to Deku. Deku seeing what the man described. Wraps around his face, something to cover his part of it, glasses and a hat. As he would immediately jump out and run over. He is very, very frightened. Saying that he's very scared, he's very scared. 
What do they need to do? The man immediately picking up Deku. As he's holding Deku in his left arm and carrying a gun in his right arm, or in his right hand. He would then tell Deku to just clo keep his eyes closed. This will be difficult. As he walks out carrying Deku. Deku, he would then watch as the man, well, he can only hear the gun f gunshots fire. The man is taking out everyone remaining in the church that is coming after Deku. Until this finely dressed man, he begins to run out the door. And he hops into a car. The man would just put down Deku as he begins to fire at the car, it immediately driving off into the distance. He would watch as the man drops the gun and pulls out a phone, immediately clicking on it. As the man in the distance, the car suddenly just hits the brakes, and begins to back up onto a railroad track, the doors locking themselves. As that is where history will end. Deku watching as the man's car is just standing there. Or, well, sitting there. As this man in bandages tells Deku to come with him. The authorities will get to him within roughly 20 minutes. If they don't get to him in time, a train will be here in 25. The odds are in his favor. I'm at least giving him that. The man walking over to a bike. And taking off the hat and sledding on a helmet. Then handing over a small helmet to Deku. Deku climbing into the side car. As the man would start the bike and the two would drive away. Deku, he is very confused. But he's at least glad that he's safe. So, who exactly is he? As they would drive for roughly 30 to 40 minutes. Deku watches as some of the bandages on the man's face are actually moving away. Whatever this man is, well, he seems to be invisible. So exactly who is he? Now, Deku wouldn't really care about this. He just keeps staring at this. Looking around at everything around him and actually seeing that this is all new, it's all different. Eventually, they would arrive at their destination, a safe house, where the man would stop, hop off the bike, walk over, and unlock, well, a lock, throwing up the door and moving the bike in as he would turn it off, closing it behind him, and locking the door on his side, turning around to tell Deku that they'll be safe here. This entire neighborhood is, uns well, they don't have surveillance in this neighborhood. Even then, this place is equipped with jammers. So, the only signal that can go out is mine. As Deku would just ask the man who he is. The man would just say that his name is, well, unimportant right now. What is, though, is your training. You are to be, well, good with your quirk. Naturally, just like your old man, you may be better. You, he somewhat thought of himself as, well, a bit over the top sometimes. He would admit that, but not easily. Now. As the man would just pull off the helmet and the glasses. Deku seeing that he just keeps these bandages on, saying that you can call him the mummy. That's what he's mostly known for or known by these days. So, understand. You'll be sleeping here and training here for a while. There is a bed and plenty of food over there. Him just putting out a small room, saying that he can sleep here for now, and this will be 
your pantry. Do not, well, only eat when you're hungry, okay? He knows that he's going to be a growing boy, so this will be plenty to last him a while. There's a shower over there. As he would point to a room. He would then walk into next, the next room. As he would close the door. Deku's somewhat just looking around. This man completely lives off the grid. He doesn't see a TV. He doesn't see a computer. He doesn't even see internet connection anywhere. But over in the next room, the man, he is turning on surveillance. As cameras and a monitor would flick on. Him playing back surveillance around the city. Going back to around the time that he drove through these areas. And scrubbing out the information. Overlaying a blank road. Basically seeing that the areas he's been driving through. No one drove through there at these times. They were completely empty. Getting rid of his own trail along with erasing Deku's name from the records on the computer there. Most of the records were burned and, well, taken away already, and the cops will be investigating it soon. As he would then get up and turn around. Picking up a cell phone and answering the call, saying that he understands. Yes, well... The boy is safe. He should be fine. But exactly what do you want? As the woman would go over saying that she just wants to, some answers. This will be quite simple. Hand over the boy. We know exactly how important he is. Now, the man, he would just say... Yeah. I don't really think that's going to work out very well. Listen, I know quite a lot of us are after him, but I will make sure this boy, he grows up properly and at least somewhat normally. Don't you monsters have any sense of self? Most of you, I know are monsters. Well, now you're just being no fun. You know that, right? It's quite simple. All I want is the child. I want to know exactly what makes him so special. If that organization wants him, then clearly he holds something of value. Don't you understand that? He is essential to taking down that company. Leaving tech up for grabs. I've seen some of that, the leaks they have. You know, plenty of that stuff is dangerous. Well, yes, actually, I know plenty of that stuff is dangerous. I'm not going to argue with you about that. Because I know you're only trying to stall me. Listen, my hack is countering your hack. So I'll just save you the trouble. As the man would hang up the phone. The woman on the other line clearly getting annoyed. As she basically balls her hands with her fist and smashes it down on the counter. Being very, very pissed off. Now, this man, he would turn around. Sitting the phone down and immediately taking out the SIM card. As he would snap it in half. And throw it away. With that, he would then get up and walk into the next room. As he sees Deku, just sitting there on, or well, sitting down on the bed. He is trying to process what has happened. The man walking over to him and telling him that things will be fine. Everything will be okay. Now, as for your training, I'm... A bit rusty at this, so I'll at least come up with something for you to do. Now, that is going to be where I leave this part off, guys. I do hope you enjoyed the video, 
And if you guys were laughing at the female, like, the female's hacker voice, that was too funny for me to try and do. Because I just talk normally, and this thing's automatically able to adjust my voice the way I want it to. There is a lot of filters with this thing, and it's actually really good. I'm actually enjoying doing this quite a lot. Anyway guys, I do hope you enjoyed the video, and have an amazing day. I'll catch you guys in the next part.